Hey, True Believers, Chris Matt coming at you with Gen 13, number one. And one thing I love about reading and going back and reading these older comics is just kind of learning the history. Like, for example, I didn't know that there was a number one before the number one. <laughs> In all my years of loving Gen 13, I never knew that there was a mini series before the main series. I always thought, you know, when you read the number one that everyone knows, they're already a team. Jack Lynch, I believe, has them, you know, living in his mansion or whatever it is, kind of like the X-Men. But here, you actually get to see how the team is formed. I found this at my local comic shop in just a random back bin along with the Kingdom Comes that we're going over. And I was just like, oh yeah, now I just need to find the rest of this miniseries. So with that said, this one particular issue came out was February of 1994. This was Jim Lee and Brandon Choi writing, J. Scott Campbell pencils, Alex Gardner doing the uh, inks, Joe Chiodo doing the colors. Here's everyone else working on the book letters, Chris Ilanopoulos. So a lot of big names for back in the day when you know a lot of people left Marvel. And we open up 1979 to kind of get an idea of the stakes that are at hand. We see this couple running for their lives and just look at how amazing the artwork was. This was back again when digital coloring and, and penciling were still kind of being experimented with. So a lot of this was traditional work. And I mean, look at the quality. They did not, you know, they did not have to go to this degree, but they made a great product. You know, it doesn't look flat. It's dynamic. Just how the old uh, drawing the Marvel way type book would be and so we find out that this there's a uh, person named Stephen Rachel and their kids Matthew and Nicole they're getting gunned down because they're part of what's called the gen 12 program so essentially this universe they're mutants they're trying to get away from the government that wants to use them as super soldiers and uh, it's a very tragic as you can see what happens to the wife and you can just see how image upped the ante in terms of violence how marvel dc whenever they do blood they kind of do it off camera and it always be kind of the a black ink blot essentially as where image is just like you know what we're gonna we're gonna make our books more mature and that's why everyone flocked to him because it was new it was hip and it was it was something different and the storytelling does not lack in terms of tragedy of how the father says you know take your sister rachel and go do as I say I'm counting on you protect your sister and when you're thinking Phew, that was heavy we cut to 1994 the future <laughs> and here's where we first see Caitlin Fairchild she's at a university in um, New Jersey she's wanting to do computer science she's hoping to eventually get into you know a summer intern program so she could start uh, flourishing in her career you see that her roommate's kind of a bitch he's like i need my space and he just she's like yeah i think you do and you can kind of see how caitlin's more conservative compared to you know the super ultra barbie girl here that needs anything and everything and then the we kind of get again the stakes begin to rise because we see these uh, people saying that they need fair child to go with her to start this uh, gen 13 program so i like that in the writing you know they say gen 12 so you put gen 13 together and you're just kind of like oh boy when the fed show up at your door like this you just kind of say yeah no thanks i'm going to shut the door in your face and that's where we first meet uh jack lynch i believe is his name and he's asking why the the gen program is being reactivated how they got into a heap of trouble last time and he actually has ulterior motives for wanting to know why this is happening i don't want to give it away but then we meet one of the guys that is gen active he's sparring against a bunch of uh opponents but he gets like he's they say no human can move this fast but someone gets the upper hand on him and he's like you bastards no one laughs at me and just whoa, son of a bitch I turned the page and I was just like, wow, that is intense. <clears throat> now right here, I know this is an older book, but we're going to get into some spoiler territory. So if you've always been interested about reading these books, 
go get it, read it, come back, and you're back. So you come to find out, you know, he's talking about how he's like, oh, I've never been able to rip loose like that in a long time. It feels good. And then we see this, uh, kind of this real bitch. She goes, you know, daddy would be so proud. Not, which for those of you that didn't grow up in the 90s, that was like a big thing to say, like say something sarcastic, like I like you and then go, not. And that was just a thing. But anyway, you see this girl, she goes, why don't you go up against someone that, that uh, where she said, how about taking on someone a bit more challenging? Me, for instance. And she gets this really seductive look on her face and she goes, I mean, who knows what we might, we might, I mean, who knows what we might end up getting into each other's heads. Just maybe we're not brother and sister after all. Yeah. <laughs> When I, when I read that, all I could think was, you know, I heard banjos, da -da down, 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 down. And uh, you're just thinking, geez, who are these people? And he goes, get your head out of the gutter, Nicole. I'm not one of your Chippendale boy toys. And he says, keep your focus on this big brother. All work and no play really has made you into a dull boy, Matt. Name sound familiar? Okay, that's all I'm going to say. And then I just, after, you know, you've seen the introduction of the book, you're just thinking, wow, um, that's terrible. Anyway, moving on. So Caitlin starts her training here at the Gen 13 program. And here's where we first see grunge. And the guy's like, get back here, Chang. The doc told you it'll be painless. And he's like, uh, no way, dude. No needles for me, man. And grunge has always been one of my favorite Gen 13ers, along with... Uh, Roxy, I love how they introduce her. She's like, don't mind grunge, honey. It's just his way of saying hello. And I like how she's smoking and no smoking. And again, this just kind of added that, that attitude. And that's why I hated, I mean, I know smoking's not good for you, but I hate that in comics. Like, oh, we're going to do no more smoking, no more drinking in the books. It's like, come on, grow up. You know, people are going to be people. Just, that's my personal thing. Because, you know, you see Logan, and I remember there's a, there was an issue, I don't remember which one, but it was during the Executioner song where everyone, I think is in the Blackbird, and Logan and uh, Remy are smoking cigars, and, you know, Guido, Jubilee, everybody's kind of like coughing, and they just don't give a shit. And it just showed their type of, like, outsider attitude. Same here, and I just hate that, oh, we have to be, we have to not do that. And I get it to a degree, but at the same time, you know, it's not your job to regulate that. It should be the parents. Anyway, moving on, and I like how they're all sort of, when they meet, it's very organic. And J. Scott Campbell's artwork, I mean, I love, anytime I see him, his lines are always so damn clean. And again, you know, there's comics that'll do things hyper-realism or surreal, like Bill Sienkiewicz, for example. And I like that J. Scott Campbell is always like in the middle where everything is exaggerated, but it still looks clean. And good and to a degree realistic I mean that would be like years and years like 24 7 working out but at least it looks like a human being and doesn't look like a flat character like caricature like you get getting a lot of more modern comics so again you get a montage of how the the uh, team here is being pushed and they think it's just you know, being part of this program or whatever, they don't know the ulterior motives of the Gen 13 program. And again, I love how Caitlin, she feels sick and she's looking for the infirmary and she, she uh, moseys into a computer room and all of a sudden here comes uh, Roxy and Grunge. And like, we come here to get some privacy. And so it's like, you know, adolescents rebelling against the system. But here there's, there's some major consequences and I like how towards the end of the book, if I can find it, if you'll stand by, we could, of course, in 90s fashion, get to see how Fairchild manifests her powers. And Roxy's just like, oh, geez, are, are you all right, Caitlin? And she's like, what's going on? What's happening? So this just, it, it sucks you in. You see, you know, all the different things that are happening with these teens. And I like it too, is in a sense, just like with uh, mutants, the, their powers are kind of like a coming of age type thing. And I don't know, just the way everyone is introduced, everyone's motives, it feels organic. You know, it's decently 
paste and it makes you, it leaves you wanting more for the next issue, which is I'm glad after this mini series that they took off with Gen 13, just how like how Wildcats was supposed to be a mini series. I think it was supposed to be like four or five issues and it went on for a long time. Both equally well written, great quality, and that's why a lot of times I go back to the older books because there is just a quality that is missing from modern day comics. So guys, if you've liked what you've seen in this book, please first and foremost support your local comic shop and see if you can get a copy. Just spend a, a Saturday morning or something just going in digging back issues because you never know what you're going to find. If you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you can possibly know. And if you don't mind hitting that fancy little gen bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and we love talking with you all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, true believers.